each other romped and you know we sort of started grouping together like that whoever was nice and started grouping together and that was how it started yeah I think I met Dink, Dinko early I met Dinko like I don't know I was young we was like on a bowling team or something <laughs> <laughs> met him my mother my mother and his mother bowled and we, we met each other I don't even know I mean I was rhyming back then I don't know if he was rhyming because I was like my first rhyme was when I was like six or seven because my brother and my sister used to rhyme. But um, then I think when I met Buster, when Buster came to our school, like in uh, middle school, I think he was a beatbox man or something. I don't even think he rhymed back then. And, uh, and like you said, all the rest of them, I mean, they were like a grade or two older than us. But I mean, they rhymed and we rhymed, so it was just, they knew who we were, we knew who they were. Sure, so was the debut Sound of Zekers or for Paul's Wascos? No, nah, actually it wasn't. So yeah, I, I think this was some, what, what was, what was yeah. the debut? The debut on Wax was a song called Levels of Imagination. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. the song I've heard about. What, what that, yeah. that actually got released? What yeah, was it, was on a, it was on an Electra anniversary album. Right. And um, it was supposed to be Leaders in a New School. And um, and we, you know, we came in the studio and um, they, um, you know, Dante Ross was there. And Leaders was, Leaders was really, I think like early on, just in regards to, if you think about Sound of the Zika's and Spontaneous or whatever, um, just early on, even before Wu and other groups came as just a whole massive, they had that idea like to kind of put everybody on. So Levels was supposed to be that song. We went to the studio, we just started rocking and it was like, yo, they let us get on the joint. And, um, and you know, we, we kind of, we did our thing on it, but it was Levels of Imagination. I don't know what the, um, it was an Electra anniversary album. I don't know right, what, right. what anniversary it was, but it came out through Electra. Sound of Zika's was nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound of Zika's was after, you know, Leaders already had the deal, but they got, you know, they were recording the, um, recording the first album, yeah. and that was like the lunchroom skit. That was really, if you think conceptually on that album, that was what was happening going into lunchroom. And for lunchroom for us, that was when we rocked. You know, after mm -hmm. school we rocked, but in the lunchroom we was doing the beats on the table and just, mm -hmm. you know, getting busy. And that's, and that's really what that song kind of represented in regards to the feel of it. Just like, yo, just, you know, rhyming, you know. See, Pete Nice, yeah, we actually worked with Dante Ross. Um, we worked with his SD50 uh, crew collective and um, E.B. and Ganji, right? I think yeah. that was their names, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, he put us in touch with, um, with Pete Nice, and um, yeah, they like, he felt this, he wanted to, to um, sign us to, you know, a little production contract. And um, we actually did sign with him. You know, we were young, we were like, maybe, we were still in high school, right? Yeah, we were still in high school because it was, it was bringing up, you know, that's when I had the, the tins that you wanted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we were still in high school. But the thing about it is we were still savvy though. And the, the deal with them, um, the deal that they had given us was really, it was a real, it was a garbage deal. It was one of those where it was like, yeah, you, know, you get 25%, we get 75%. But you know, the whole thing was all like, you know, after your first record blows up or whatever, you could always renegotiate. But we were kind of just more savvy than that where, you know, we had stipulations put in there that if, we didn't sign a deal with a major within a certain amount of time that we weren't going to be, you know, committed to that particular deal. And, um, and so that's really what happened where when we, you know, with merchandising and giving away publishing and everything, you know, we were young, but we weren't dumb and we were just like, it's not for us, you know. So, yeah, he did go, they did reverse, <laughs> they did reverse the, uh, the Cracker Jacks. But my thing, my thing was that you know, the business side of things, um, a lot of people feel that because they got jerked, that everybody has to go through that. And that was really what it was. It was like, yo, my first deal wasn't good, so your deal can't be good. I would think, my thing was that your first deal wasn't good. You knew what it was to be under a bad deal, so 
you should be, anybody you put on, you should not want to put in that situation. So really, I mean, it was no, there was hard feelings at first. Um, I mean, he had hard feelings, you know. I didn't have any hard feelings because we kept it moving, but um, all of those hard feelings were, were kind of put to the side when, um, you know, Sub Rock, rest in peace, when he um, passed away because actually that was the first time we had seen him that we came in contact with them after we stopped rolling with them. And um, that was at Sub Rock's funeral. Uh, from, uh, we had a couple of uh, production deals going on. Um, first, we had a thing going with Job Records, and uh, we we could have signed with them. And I think we was being a little bit too greedy. He was a little too big headed. Um, but then again, you know, you want to get what's best for the group, and you don't want to just settle. Um, so. We, we missed out on a couple of deals. We started messing with um, Buster, and we started with Buster on a production deal. And um, then we had to deal with um, the Rowdy. With Rowdy Records, yeah. right, right. Because yeah. early on, because Buster had, um, we were like the first group, we were the first group on, um, on Flip Mode. Flip Mode, yeah, yeah. So we were the first group, and then he had uh, um, Artist Rampage, the last, um, last Boy Scout, right? Yeah, and um, <laughs> Rampage was on it. And um, so after Spontaneous, we did Spontaneous. When we did Spontaneous, it was only me and um, Whip in the group. Um, we did Spontaneous and uh, started off, kind of killed Spontaneous too. <laughs> yeah, we did Spontaneous. And, uh, you know, there was interest, but Buster, like, always had a respect for Buster's, um, I guess I had a, a respect for him creatively. I mean, he was, he's a creative dude, you know? And so we started messing with, and also his hustle. He had a good, you know, he, he was a hustler. Like, if you think about back then, Buster was on, just going to studio sessions, getting on everybody's joints. He was really out there more than anybody in the group. So right, right. I remember after Spontaneous, he really wanted to mess with us. We wanted to mess with him. And, um, you know, and so we actually signed with, um, Tim got signed to Flip Mode. He got a deal with, um, with Rowdy. Um, this is like before even Bad Boy had the deal on Arista. He had his deal on Arista. And then really just things at that point just started to, um, it started to fall apart because we love music. I speak for myself, I love music, but I don't really love the business side of music, you know? And once it became, once that business element came a part of it, it, it even the business part of it a lot of times even impacts friendships. And it just started being something where I say that I think that um, I give credit to those that those that make it in the business of music because it takes a lot to make it in the business of music. To be a musician and to, to go hard in the studio and to be creative, that's one element. It's a lot of creative people, but to have the patience and to have the, I don't know, like to, to composure to deal with some of the things that happen business-wise and not react in a certain way. It takes a special type of individual. So, the business part of things just wasn't, for me, that, that's just like, kind of turned me off to it, you know, in that sense, but. I say the same here too. Um, my thing was always, the fun part about it is being creative, writing, making good music. That's, that's, that's what we do. But then you got the business side. All right, you got the business side. Then you got the politics, you know? So, I mean, it's like, it's like you gotta, you, in the beginning, you're like, all right, I got this. This is sewn. I'm put this record out. You know, you got this record that you did today. It might not come out for another three, four years. Or well, you got this record that you did today. It might not come out for another five, six years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? By then, you know, you got to make new stuff. So uh, it's a lot of politics. Somebody got to come before you or some, or this or that or somebody's cousin. or, or it's, it's always something, you know. So you, you got to be ready for that. And... Um, it's a learning process also. You know, you learn as you go along, you're gonna make mistakes and um so we signed with the Rowdy Deal. Everything was cool, we did some shows, we went to Jack the Rapper, we met a lot of people and um but the time expired on that contract and we ended that that we terminated that contract. It was on a cool vibe though. It was on a cool vibe, so then we moved on and um what was next? We kept it moving. We did some more shows. 
I think we started, we put out that first record. Yeah, we put out a record independently. Um, Never Change. Yep, yep. Yeah. Mm. And um, Don't Go There. Like, we put that out independently. Then um, we actually did, um, so we did shows with that. I mean, even with the um, the Rowdy joint, like, we were always, we were doing shows. We used to, I mean, we, we did shows solo. We did shows where, remember, mm. Fife rocked with us sometimes. Mm. So, mm. A couple of shows we did. Mix. You know, yeah, Ooh. yeah. You know, we did, Killed we were it. always doing shows and doing stuff. But um, we put out that record independently. And then um, through Fat Beats, we also did a record with um, Rob Swift um, called Nickel and Dime that we did, and um, Slime Rhymes as well, which was on the B side. And that actually, at the point like that was bubbling, it was actually getting, it's funny because it was getting a lot of play across seas. And um, you know, so that was really like the last thing that we put out on, on Wax. Whip actually though, we would do something mm. with, um, with um, Flex, right? Yeah, Flex thing, I was yeah. about that, let's be yeah. specific. Can you talk about that, how that come about? Um, I was chilling with Brown, we was at the studio. Uh, Charlie, to, Brown, from Charlie Brown from Leeds of the mm-hmm. New School. And um, Cold Crush Brothers was there. They was doing a promo for Hot 97. And um, Brown went in, did his thing. And then he's like, yo, this is my man. So then, you know, they let me rock. They saw that I was nice. So it was like, yeah, we got to run with this. So promo came out and um, did his thing. I, people's coming up to me in the street like, yo, 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 I heard you on the radio. I heard you on the radio. Um, and Flex, you know, he took a liking to me, you know, um, went up to the radio station a couple of times, started going up to the tunnel a couple of times. Um, then we went to BT once and, um, you know, I was just chilling and enjoying the moment and, um, just trying to learn and see what it's all about. And, um, and then uh, after that, the uh, Crack Jacks, we did some shows and we didn't end it. <laughs> <laughs>